Good morning, and thank you for joining me for another Five Good Minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study, our verse-by-verse -verse study of Psalm 119. The massive, uh, masterfully crafted um, uh, psalm um, that, uh, that uh, we have been studying. It's an acrostic, of course. Each section, eight-verse section, begins with uh, a letter of the Hebrew alphabet in, in order. And today, uh, we are in section um, Zion, uh, verses 49 through 56. Uh, this section, in this section, every verse begins with that letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Let's go ahead and read this section. Remember the word to thy servant in which thou hast made me hope, this is my comfort and my affliction, that your word has revived me. The arrogant utterly deride me, yet I do not turn aside from your law. I have remembered your ordinances from old, O Lord, and comfort myself. Burning indignation has seized me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes are my song. In the house of my pilgrimage, O Lord, Thy name, I remember thy name in the night, and keep your law. You have become, or this has become mine, that I observe your precepts. As we've said, every section is an impassioned cry for help. Every section is a celebration of God's word. And there are different words used to describe God's word in a neat section there are at least six, in almost each section, there are at least six, certainly six references or more, but at least six of the seven vocabulary words are used, and six are used in this one. The word word, ordinances, law, statutes, um, and name, and precepts um, are there uh, in, this, in this passage. Um, so I think we see both, and we see some things that we continue to see this deep feeling, deep emotions are uh, being expressed. Um, and, and this is a young man who is under stress, under duress. Uh, and we see that there. Um, the, the arrogant utterly deride me, he says. People who are in power, people who think highly of themselves, have set themselves upon this young man uh, at court. It sounds an awful lot like young David, this section does. He talks about his indignation. Burning indignation has seized me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Remember at the end of Psalm 139, that beautiful psalm that begins, Lord, you've searched me, you know me, you know what I'm going to say before the word is formed in my tongue. You form me in, the, in my mother's womb. You wove me together in my inward parts. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. This is all too wonderful for me to understand, to comprehend. But that psalm ends by David saying, I need you to, 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 to judge my heart because this is what is in my heart. He says, I hate those who thee. I loathe those who rise up with thee. I hate them with the utmost hatred. They have become my enemy. And then he says, so search me, O oh God, know my heart. Um, are these feelings healthy? To feel intense anger and indignation at people because of their sin? Uh, n I don't think so. <laughs> Not necessarily. It's, it's a healthy um, um, r impulse response to be sickened by sin. Job was a man who was sickened by sin, Job chapter 1. But to hate the sinner because of his sin, no. Is it healthy to take that feeling in your heart to the Lord instead of denying and leaving it there with him? Yes. And that's what David does, and that's what this young man does who is writing this song. Other interesting features of this section, he, he talks about the word to your servant in which you made me hope. It seems like some sort of uh, revelation has been made to this young man beyond that which has been written down and handed down, those ordinances of old. There's, there's a promise that's been made or some statement that's been made by God to this man, and he believes 
that this will come true. There's the whole notion that this is the rock I cling to, and that very last verse, this is mine, my possession. I hold on to this as mine. I observe your precepts. I have your written word. I have your promise to me personally, and I live my life based upon those, and that's my possession. My possession doesn't reside in estates or in gold uh, or in inheritances. Uh, or in power that I might wield. My, my possession is this, that I know your word, and I'm doing my best to keep your word. Uh, such wisdom uh, in the heart of this young man, even though in this moment there are unhealthy things in his heart as well. He's taken them to God, as David taught him and da taught us to do. Well, tomorrow we'll pick up with the letter Heth and with verse 57. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word.